from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, March the 17th, 2022. As the devastating onslaught on Ukraine continues, Hillel International announced that among the many casualties in the war so far, a Jewish college student was killed in the fighting on Monday in the city of Kharkiv while defending Ukraine. He was identified by the city's Hillel chapter as Serafim Sabaransky. The Hillel in Kharkiv building, by the way, was almost completely destroyed about two weeks ago in a Russian shelling attack. Israel's foreign minister, Yair Lapid, announced cargo planes set off today from Israel, 17 tons of equipment for the construction of a field hospital in the town of Motishka in western Ukraine. The hospital will be named Kohav Meir for the late Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir, who was from Ukraine. The Times of Israel reports that Israel also said it is sending a delegation of 15 Russian and Ukrainian-speaking police officers to Poland to help refugees, providing first aid and helping them get on flights to Israel. Israel's Population and Immigration Authority reported that 11,390 Ukrainians have arrived in Israel since the Russian invasion, among them some 5,000 Jewish refugees from Ukraine as well as from Russia and Belarus who are making Aliyah to Israel under the law of return. Israel's President Isaac Herzog and his wife Michal went to greet a number of those new immigrants today together with Immigration and Absorption Minister. Panina Tamano Shata and Jerusalem Mayor Moshe Leon. Herzog tweeted of the meeting, We heard their difficult stories about the great destruction that the war and the journey to Israel brought with it. Herzog said immigration to the state of Israel is the lifeblood of the nation. Well, dozens gathered in an interfaith prayer and support rally in New York City yesterday, urging the United States government to do more to help Ukraine. The rally at the United States mission to the United Nations was organized by Rabbis for Peace in Ukraine and included a number of New York rabbis like Rabbi Avi Weiss of the Hebrew Institute of Riverdale, the Bayit, as well as other clergy and faith leaders standing together to raise a voice of moral conscience, the group wrote, telling the U.S. we must do even more to help Ukraine and Ukrainian refugees. Weiss said earlier, I believe when the history of this horror will be written, much like the history of the 30s and the 40s, it will be documented that the U.S. did too little too late. Weiss spoke to the crowd yesterday morning, noting Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's speech to the U.S. Congress just earlier yesterday where Zelensky thanked America and President Joe Biden for the help it had given, but also issued, Weiss referenced, this plea. His message was two words, two words to America. Do more. Do more. Do more. Do more. Do more. Weiss also spoke to the crowd of the critical importance of showing up to stand with Ukraine. We're here in the name of justice. We're here in the name of goodness. We're here in the spirit as Jews. There's so much more in common that humankind has than our differences. Zelensky, as we have reported to you, will address Israeli Knesset lawmakers on Sunday at 6 p.m. Israel time. Lapid and Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett will be present. The speech will also be simulcast on a large screen at Tel Aviv's Habima Square for the Israeli public to watch. Well, today is Purim, the Jewish festival that marks the attempted destruction and ultimate survival of the Jews in the ancient Persian Empire in 5th century BCE. Celebrated by children dressing up in costumes, giving to the poor, handing out mishloach manot, trays of sweet treats, including hamantashen, and of course the reading of the book of Esther, the Megillah, which was read last night across the Jewish world, including in several Jewish communities in Ukraine. 
like the Times of Israel reports in Lvov at the Ture Zahav Synagogue, and in Chernovitsi, Ukraine, near the Romanian border, with representatives from the Schechter Institute of Jerusalem and Masorti Olami, the international umbrella organization for Masorti Conservative Judaism, led by Executive Director Rabbi Irina Gritsevskaya. The Institute shared the Megillah reading and celebration on Facebook, writing that despite the difficulty, fear, and uncertainty, and in the shadow of the hard war, members of the traditional community in Chernovitsi succeeded, along with refugees from other communities, to celebrate the Purim holiday with great joy. They read the Megillah, ate, laughed, and sang, and in a short moment, they were relieved from the difficult situation. <laughs> Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, March the 17th at 7 o'clock. It's Talmud study. At 7.30, a panel of experts discuss the situation in Ukraine from the Miriam Institute. At 9, hear from the Muslim-Jewish comedy duo Shalom Habibi. At 10, college basketball coach and basketball Hall of Famer Jim Boheim joins Rabbi Erez Sherman to discuss his involvement in Coaches versus Cancer on Rabbi on the Sidelines. And coming up next, it's Good Week, Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, March the 17th, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well. <laughs>